start right now. Uh, thank everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, this is the first sermon of the, this new year that we're doing in uh, 2017. So it's January the 6th, 2019. Yes, I think I said 16, didn't I? Yes, 2019. It's 2019. Uh, it's a very special birthday. Somebody we love and appreciate has a uh, very special day. Someone we love and appreciate has a birthday today. I don't know who that is, but he does. Look around and find the old man in the room. Uh, yeah, well, they can't look around, but I'll tell you, there's an old guy in here. Oh, I can't believe it is. Older than snot, <laughs> uglier than sin. Okay, so at any that rate, me. <laughs> and then there's you, and then there's you, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's been a while because of other uh, circumstances that we, we had a, we, we paused church for a while. Um, so I just want to do a very small review from what we did last week, and these small reviews always seem to end up being long, uh, but if you'll turn in your Bibles, and I probably should do it here on the screen, because not everybody has the Bible, that's the... Uh, Go back to the very beginning right here to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, 11 through 15. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man, but to be silent, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Now, we've been going through this passing of Scripture for quite a while, just these couple of verses, and spending a lot of time because they're very controversial. Uh, people use this to, I mean, come on. They say, hey, a woman can't be a pastor. It says so right here. Uh, and we've been talking, there's some key points. And the key point is when you take this in context, it's P, uh, John is, Paul, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy in the prior verses for the leaders and elders to be lifting up holy hands that they are coverings, they need to protect. So this is all about protecting the Christians in his church from the attacks of demons. Paul says right here, he does, he says, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man, but be in silence. Now, Paul says he doesn't permit. That doesn't mean God doesn't permit. And I'll put that out there. Paul has said this before, that uh, when he talks about Mary, he says, not the Lord, but I. In reference, God said you could get a divorce for one reason. Adultery. adultery. And what happens? The adulterer gets killed. So you're a widow or a widowess. You're, you're not married anymore and you can't be reconciled because they're dead. Under the old law, the Ten Commandments, if you committed adultery, you were stoned. Okay, so that was the only reason Jesus. But Paul says, not the Lord, but I say. Hey, if a, if a believing wife is married to an unbelieving uh, husband, and he wants to remain with her, she needs to remain. 
I'll say it. I'll pray it. She has to remain married to her husband. Because how do you know if you'll lead him to the Lord? And then he makes it vice versa. The woman for the man, the man for the woman. But he also says, if they want to leave you, you're under no bondage. So Paul says, as an apostle of Christ, making doctrine that God will honor. God honors what? His apostles say, he, God didn't have to tell Paul to say that. Paul said it, and God honored Paul, and he says, okay, if, if an unbeliever wants to leave, you're free. You're not under any bondage. You can get remarried. So we got to put this out. This is not doctrine for every church. We don't know if Peter, the apostle Peter, had the same doctrine. We don't know if James, the leader of the Jerusalem church, had that same doctrine. It is clear that Paul is writing to Timothy that the ones that I'm the apostle to, all the churches that are under me, I won't let a woman preach. But yet he had been all through scripture. Do we see where he was with, a, oh, my mind's just totally Priscilla and Aquila? Uh, male and female preachers. Uh, he had, through his, his relationship, he had females helping, protecting, females ministering. So we got to read the scripture and note that this is talking about submission. It's ta not talking about what people make it at. So we're dealing in the area of submission to authority to your protecting for protection. Not that a woman isn't smarter, stronger, or more capable. Okay, so I'm gonna interrupt you. So in that verse twelve, like you just said, that's not Paul. I mean, that's not God talking. That's Paul talking. Right? I do not permit. That is Paul talking, and I do believe Paul is an apostle, and I do believe God honors that. So I do believe my situation. I am divorced. Okay. I did not leave my wife. I went to court and said I will not divorce my wife. I. I quote, I said, what God is joined together, let no man separate. Nevertheless, she left. It wasn't none of my doing. I'm not held under any bondage. God's not going to punish me, limit me, curse me, put me down a notch because my unbelieving wife left. And it, it's like, thank God for Paul <laughs> making that thing. Because now Satan can't come and attack me. But if Paul hadn't said that, Satan could come and attack all these people that it's happening to. Which would be very unfair. Because it's if it's not your fault, there's nothing. And nowadays, well before, it, it was hard. Nowadays, like they told me when my head did, you can fight it, you can stall it, but you can't stop it. There's nothing you can do. So why would you be punished in any way for something that happened to you that there was nothing you could do about it? I agree. And I'm glad that we were accepting this premise that this was really written not as a doctrine for everybody, but it was written as a doctrine that Paul did not want this happening in his churches because it opened doorways for Satan to attack women. Okay, and so we spent all, we've been spending a lot of time on it. So the last time we were together, we were on our study notes. Uh, these are here. Those that are looking on YouTube, uh, you're probably not going to get this, but if you happen to see it on my uh, Facebook account, it will be there. I believe God Ministries or John Robinson. You can read it there. Uh, if you want, you can always uh, request, and I could get you give me your email, and I can. Uh, email it to you and you will have it. But last time we were there, we were on point three. Okay? We're on point four. We're, I'm just going to read this out loud quickly just for remembrance. Okay? Adam was not deceived, but Eve, being deceived, fell into transgression. Now, what was transgression? People transgress? Uh, you're falling into it. Yeah. Well, let's just cl click on it. You could be doing wrong. Sin could be transgression, but transgression is not always sin. I mean, if there's no law saying don't do it, 
there's no law saying don't drive down this country road at 80 miles an hour and a couple of people get die from it and then they put a, 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 a road marker up there or a, a speed limitation to 45. Now if you drive 80 miles an hour, you broke the law. But before you didn't break the law, but you still transgress driving in a safe manner. Okay, so that word transgression, you can see right here, is a going over, a metaphor, disregard, violating of the Mosaic Law. Well, there was no Mosaic Law at that point, you know, when Adam and Eve, there was no Mosaic Law. Denial of blah, blah, ratifying the law. But it basically, it's disregarding, transgression. You, it, for Adam and Eve, it was disregarding what God said. God said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She ate of the tree of God, knowledge of good and evil. She fell into transgression, disregarding God's word. Why? She was deceived. Okay? It is true that woman was deceived, meaning she thought it would be okay to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, seeing it was good for food, pleasant to look upon, and desirable to obtain knowledge. She took and ate of this fruit. Now, that's what it says in Genesis. She's seen that. Now, do we see anything bad in there? If God had created something and said, okay, man, this is good for food, uh, for uh, uh, pleasant to look upon, good for food, and you'll get knowledge from that. That would be a good thing to eat. doesn't say she was lying. It doesn't say that any of these things were not true. It implies that each and every one of them were true. And as a matter of fact, later, God's talking to the Trinity, and he says, now what will we do? They become like us. They've been got wisdom. See, the attribute of eatness is now Adam and Eve got wisdom. And now they became like God. And when we read in Proverbs chapter 3 and Proverbs chapter 8, it is clear that the Holy Spirit is identified as wisdom. In James, where it says, if you ask for wisdom, God is liberal and just to give to anybody. Liberal. He'll give to anybody with no limitations. Wisdom. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay, so is it bad to have wisdom? No. no. So we got a real conundrum here. We're thinking, why was it bad? Okay, now this didn't mean that she wasn't smart. I mean, she was deceived, right? But it's not because she wasn't smart or that she wasn't as strong as Adam, but was cheated. Now, when we looked at the word deceived, we realized, we, we read that in Hebrew, it means to be cheated out of something. So Eve was cheated out of something, okay? She was deceived. She was cheated out of something. But what was she cheated out of? I think it was her authority. Because remember when we were talking how Adam and Eve were equal? They didn't have to become one. They were one. Eve, or woman at that time, was <clears throat> taken out of Adam. She wasn't created of the dust. She was taken out of Adam. They were one. Okay? Adam had the authority of God. Adam had the authority that God gave him. Let's just be more politically correct. Eve had that same authority. Now she was cheated out of what? It doesn't say what she was cheated out of. I say it was she was cheated out of her authority. And this is what I'm going on to uh, continuing on this path uh, of why I believe she was cheated out of her authority and Adam wasn't. And that's why Paul says, I don't allow a woman to have authority over a man because she doesn't have it. Satan has it. Satan, it was given to Satan, but Adam still has it. Yes, is it limited? Is it, is, it, is it still changed? Does he have to rule and reign the world from a different position, no longer in the Garden of Eden? Now he has to do it on earth? Yes, but it, I believe it was uh, authority. Now, I'm not saying the Bible says that. I'm saying out of my belief, hearing of the Holy Spirit, in the glasses that I'm reading through, that God is good all the time to his inheritance, Eve was cheated out of her authority. Okay? Uh, now, my next one is I propose that Adam... Well, wait, let me just continue reading this. Uh, Whereas Adam wasn't cheated out of anything, even though he ate of the same tree. 
Nevertheless, he knew he would suffer corruption once he did. So why did he take? Why did Adam eat of the fruit? If Adam was not deceived, why did uh, Adam eat of the fruit? He knew it was bad. And he did, it doesn't say that he fell in the transgression. As a matter of fact, it is clear that he didn't fall in the transgression. He did. So he didn't disregard what God said. Adam ate of the tree of the, uh, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and did not disregard what God said. He did not transgress. Okay, so why did he eat of it? Again, I propose, I may be wrong, you guys can give me all your arguments, all your inputs, but I, yeah, scripture, uh, sh I sharp, iron sharpened scripture, scripture interprets scripture, you got to get it so tightly weaving that there's no holes in it. Any other proposal, there's a hole in it. Why did Adam do this? I say my proposal is Adam did not want woman to be separated from him. Woman. Woman was not a gender. Woman was the name of the, his helping. He didn't want her to be separated. Remember, God said it was bad. For man, Adam to be alone. Adam couldn't do his job. He needed a helpmate. He needed a comforter. He needed somebody to help him do what God said, told him to do. Well, if she's gone, is he going to be happy? No. No, sir. Yes. How did he know that would be the consequences? Because he was not deceived, nor did he transgress. He did not disregard God's word. But he didn't. He, he didn't have the wisdom. He did have the wisdom he ate it. Uh, oh, before. 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 So just, how did he it know was that the they consequences died. would be her, a loss to him? I think she ate it. I think instantaneously, as soon as she ate it, they were separated. I don't think it took like 10 years, 10 days, 10 minutes. Eve ate first, then gave it to Adam. So as soon as Adam were separated. But they went together and sewed leaves to cover them. That was after he ate. Yeah, and they hid. So I believe there was a time period before when she ate and she gave to Adam and Adam ate. There's a time period. It doesn't say how long that time period was. But there was a time period. Oh, wait, wait. I don't assume it was a long, very long time. But there was a time period. And I think Adam had a brilliant mind. Okay? Totally functioned with no... no Corruption, nothing. And I think Adam was like, wow, she's separated from me. And I think all these scenarios went through his mind in a millisecond. And my proposal was Adam didn't want to be separated from, uh, a woman to be separated from him. She was. Therefore, he had to take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil as well to be able to be re remain with her and continue the job God given him, or was given him. But see, he didn't have wisdom yet. So I think he's going through this scenario, he doesn't have wisdom yet, and he thinks, well, the only way I'm going to stay with Eve is to eat of it and be where she is, because I can, I can go to her, but she can't come back to me. And I can still protect God and serve God, because now we're together. And he didn't have the wisdom to know that, hey, God's going to kick him out of the garden. Right? Because God never told him he would. God never said that before. Matter of fact, it doesn't even imply that God even thought about it until he had this council with the Trinity. So even though Adam knew that he would suffer decay once he ate of this fruit, because God told him, dying you shall die, you'll suffer decay, uh, that he knew that, but I don't know if he knew or didn't know or didn't knew or realize that he would no longer have access to the tree of life. Now, Adam knew what the tree of life was for, and the tree of life was in there. Okay, just as well as he knew what the tree of knowledge was for, good and evil. Okay, so he, but he didn't, I don't think he realized he couldn't eat of the tree of life, because he didn't have wisdom. He didn't realize that now he would be separated from God. As, as woman was separated from him, now, when he ate it, he would be separated from God. Okay? I don't think he understood that. 
uh, because he didn't have wisdom. Okay, but he knew if he ate of it, they would both be healed. And God said they would be healed and live forever. That's why God said, hey, what are, let's kick them out of the garden to Eden, lest they take of the tree of life and live forever. So they weren't kicked out because they broke a law, because God was mad at them. God did it to protect them. But now they were separated from God. And I'll say this is why Jesus became lower than an angel, became a human being with flesh and blood, became the Lamb of God to join us back, to get us back. Now again, this is just my proposal, right? Um, and I, I believe that fits in with everything. Now why did Paul do Adam did it? I believe his love and need for woman, remember, woman was her name, was great enough for him to give up everything he had to remain with her. Now, some people here aren't married. If you choose to be married, you don't have to be in love. You don't have to have Google feelings. But you have to choose to be in love, and therefore the Google feelings come from that. You have to choose to honor your mate. You have to choose to protect her and do these things. Because those feelings may not all be there. Adam chose to protect his wife, even though he would lose his position. <coughs> but maybe he didn't know it. I don't know. It doesn't say that Adam de debated about it. But he did do that, and he didn't transgress. The Bible says he didn't transgress. He didn't discount God's word. So to me, that implies he knew there was going to be consequences. And the only consequences I know that he knew is God said, the day that you eat of the tree of, life, of knowledge of good and evil, dying you shall die. Through corruption, you'll die. The day that she ate it, she was separated and had corruption. Okay? They, she being woman. So now, uh, let's move on to point four, all right? Now it's way warm in here, huh? Yeah, I just don't see how it's... She transgressed just because it says she transgressed, but he did. Because he did. Don't... No, I'm hearing There ain't a reason. Because he did it to save her... He still did it. Right. He, he still he did still, it. He still, he transgressed just to say. But the Bible he says did. he didn't, she didn't. No, it doesn't say. It said she did. It didn't say he didn't do anything wrong. Actually, it does. And, and, and if you read it in context, it, the reason Paul says he does not allow a woman to do it is because she transgressed. Okay? So the literature and the, and the thing, and if we read in, in other scriptures where he doesn't allow a woman to teach, it's for the same reason. Uh, now, now, let's back up, okay? I said, Adam also transgressed. I know you said that. Okay, I didn't say Peter's going to let a woman preach. I know that. I'm right. talking. You're talking about that transgression, right? Right. I know. I hear you, Bob. But the Bible does not say that. That's why I've said a lot of times we have our feelings, we have our understandings, and we try to get the Bible to conform to that. But the Bible says, "Let a woman learn in silence with all submission." Why? Okay. And or in addition to learning in all submission, in addition, I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. But be in silence. Now, for that means why? Why does he he say this? Uh, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell in transgression. If you read that, if you uh, uh, sentence diagraph it. The reason Eve fell into transgression because she was deceived. 
If she wasn't deceived, she couldn't have fell into transgression. Since okay. Adam wasn't deceived, he did not fall into transgression. No, well, it's just did, simple well, English. Did, why did he uh, disobey God? He didn't disobey God. God, God gave him a God recommendation. Said, you don't do that. Don't do that. And he did it. He disobeyed. But God didn't say it was a commandment. And anytime there's a commandment and you disobey God's commandment, there's a penalty. Eve would be the same thing. Why is Eve the one? Because she, it says she disregarded God's word as meaning something. So did Adam. If I, if I say, don't, if I'm the father in my house, and I say, kids, don't run out on the freeway, okay? okay? And Because if you do, you'll get hit by a car. Okay, Okay, so, no, no, let me finish. So one let goes me, out. Let, let me okay. finish. So one goes out, and, fin and, and, and the, old, the youngest child goes out. The oldest child, who's watching over that, decides to go out and save her. They both went out the oldest did not transgress. The youngest, being deceived, disregarded my words as not being important and went out. The oldest knew it was important, knew that God's word went out, and knew that he would have to, or he or she, would have to go into the busy freeway to save the child. So you could both do the same thing. One be deceived, one not. One fall into transgression and one not. Yeah, but that's all the word that comes out all the way through it. Sin is sin. Where it wasn't it? a sin. It wasn't a sin. She was told she couldn't do it. She was Satan. It was a recommendation. Don't do it because the day you do it, you'll enter into corruption, basically. Okay. The serpent tricked her. Would say, yeah. oh. No, you're not going to die. So she ate it. Yeah. Right? Then she gave it to, her, to Adam. Adam. Yeah. And he also ate it. Yep. He didn't need it. He didn't do it to save her. Well, we don't know that. That's what I'm saying. He well, did that. And I may be wrong. Well, I get it. I may be wrong, me, but he it, didn't transgress. you say... Okay, I'm going to save somebody. That doesn't mean somebody. You're right. It, he didn't have to do it to do that. And, and he didn't sit there and say, oh, I did it to save her. I did it to that. He said, God, but that why did he? you gave me. No, but why did he? Gave it. But yeah, but he didn't blame her. He just made a statement. No, he blamed God. He didn't blame God. He just made a statement. If you read it, it's just a saying, "How this happened?" He's not blaming. If he blamed, if he blamed, that means he was deceived. It says he wasn't deceived, so he therefore cannot blame. If you, if I'm blaming you for something I did, it's because you deceived me, or somehow I got deceived. If Adam was not deceived. He could not blame. It's just simple thing. So but I'm not the way saying it is written. He blamed God. I understand what for, you're saying. And the thing is, is Eve did it. She was deceived. Yes. She did wrong. Yes. She, she transgressed. That I means she disregarded okay. God's word. Adam was not deceived. It says. She gave it to Adam. Yes. Adam didn't do it, take it from her, take right. it by, to save her. He she gave it, it to him. We don't know why Adam took it, but I mean Because she statement. said it was good. Well, she just gave it to him. Is it? Well, if well, he was there, why didn't he discourage her from eating it to begin with? Well, we, we he was there, but we don't know how much there was. You know, how close, how far. We don't know if he was there when the serpent was was talking to a, a woman. But I want to put this point. I understand what people when people read this, but if you really understand, God is a good God all the time. He never, ever, 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 ever punishes his inheritance. He didn't punish Adam. He didn't punish woman. They didn't sin. 
Woman was deceived, but Adam was not deceived. Therefore, Adam could not blame God for giving woman to him who tricked him. If he did, then Adam was deceived. If he wasn't deceived, that means he had full knowledge of what he was doing. He was not deceived, and he did not fall into transgression. Now, I'm just filling in the blanks. And of course, people out there, you will love this conversation. We're going back. Because I can't say I'm right. I'm just saying this is how I make it work, okay? But the Bible says Adam was not deceived. And Paul says, I do not permit a woman to teach because women were deceived. And Adam was not. Uh, along with the other things. So I'm trying to put it in that, hey, this is all about a covering. This is all about protection. Okay, so when Adam does that, if he knew all this, why did he take of the yeah, fruit? I, just, I don't know why he took it. This is what took, I think. He didn't take of it. She gave it to him. So to me, that does would she, be... Did she force it down his mouth? I mean, no, she that wouldn't it? be... Oh, she took it. He took it. I have to protect her. Or, or whatever. It too. Or maybe he said, maybe but he was. He did, she gave it to him, and he said, The woman you gave, she gave it, and she gave it to me, and I. Right, so gave let, let's. let's so take, I did not do it. Let's go down this rabbit trail, okay? She, she, Eve eats it. She becomes wise. She's separated from Adam, but she becomes wise. Okay, Eve takes it. Adam looks and says, Wow. You're wise. Hmm. I want to have what you're having. Let's let's go that way. Then Adam was deceived, and then Adam transgressed because he disregarded God's word, because God told him personally not to do it. So since Adam was not deceived, nor did he transgress, that could not be the scenario. So in other words, we start putting things together, and if there's a hole. It can't be that. Try another uh, a scenario. Oh, there's a hole. Can't be that. I haven't found a hole in this. Well, I find it. Maybe. Okay. All right. Okay. So at this point, at this point, okay, Adam uh, takes of the tree, uh, of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eve has our, a woman has already taken of it. Okay. At this point, Adam now changes his helper's name from woman, which means out of the womb of man, to Eve, meaning the mother of all living. Now we see this in Genesis 3.16 and verse 20. Genesis 3.16 and verse 20 states, To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Skipping to verse 20. Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Not the mother of the dead, mother of the living. That's where Jesus makes this clarification in the New Testament even. That uh, Christians, uh, that Abraham didn't die, he's the living. You know, he's of the living. What uh, David was, even though he's in the dead, he's the living. He's the, the God calls the father of the living. If Adam, Jacob, uh, Isaac, if they were all dead, then God wouldn't be talking to them or talking about them. Okay? Uh, so Eve is the mother of all living. Okay? Additionally, Adam and Eve now had to engage in sexual intercourse to become one with each other again. Now see, they, Adam and woman were one. Now Adam and woman are not one. They got cast out of the garden. They're living on their earth right now. Now they have blood. They have tunics of skin from the top of their head to their soles of their feet. They have blood that will get rid of corruption. Blood gives you life, but blood also now gives rid of corruption. It's the waste products out of the cell, goes to the kidneys and the liver and other organs, and it is put out. So blood 
has more of a, I shouldn't say, as more or as equal of a cleansing characteristic as it does an oxygen jading and delivery. But it's a minimum, it's equal, okay? But, you know, if you have kidney failure and you go to these, uh, where they put you on kidney dialysis, right? If you don't do that, you die pretty quick, right? You'll die quicker from that than not eating food. Okay? But you'll die quicker from not having oxygen than anything. <laughs> you know? So the point is blood is used to bring out corruption. Okay? So um, now they're separated. Now why does a man leave his father, mother and father? To be joined with his wife. So obviously when, when Adam said this, he had no father or mother. He was prophesying about what would come to be and for people outside, not him. He, he, he's not leaving mom and dad to be joined to woman. They're already one. But now he has to. Now the only way they can do that is through sexual intercourse. You know, in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians, it talks, and I think it's around chapter 5 and 6, where it talks about sexual immorality. God says, what is a Christian to do with a harlot? Because God is joined. John, God, Jesus Christ becomes joined to a harlot. So if you're a Christian and you have sex with a harlot, Jesus had sex with a harlot, is what it says. You become one through sexual intercourse. That's why you're, not, you're supposed to remain a virgin. Of course, too, you say with a harlot, You've talked previously yes. that whether everybody knows that, that's a temple temple prostitute, prostitute yes. not just not just a female. But still, still that, that sexual intercourse causes unity. Right. And the point is, is how could God ever be joined with evil? Through sexual intercourse of a harlot. Okay? But yeah, very good point. Let me put that. So additionally, Adam and Eve now had to engage in sexual intercourse to become uh, one with each other, as is mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now this is before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is right after Eve was, or woman was created. From this point forward, okay, from this point forward, woman had who that come from Eve will have a desire to rule over their husband, but he, but the man will rule over them. Because as descendants of Adam, the men still had the authority given Adam, where women do not. Remember, at this point, Adam and Eve, as well as every human being on the earth, have corruption. Thus, women require a covering to protect them from this corruption, as well as the fallen angels, which are demons, unclean spirits, etc. We find this in Romans 5.12 and 1 Corinthians 11.10. Nevertheless, they, now they being women, will be delivered from this desire to rule over their husband with the resentment associated with it through childbearing if both husband and wife continue in faith, love, holiness, and self-control. Now, why, I ask you, why would, would God tell Eve that your desire will be for your husband, but nevertheless, he will rule over you? And we'll see in the Greek and in the, in the grammar of that, it is, you'll, you'll, you'll submit to him, but nevertheless, he'll rule over if she didn't now want to have the authority that he has. See, she lost the authority that he had. Now she wants to rule over him, meaning even as alongside him. 
okay, as it was before because she had it and now she doesn't. But guess what? It's not going to happen because you gave it to Satan. You lost your soul. Adam never gave it to Satan. Adam never was deceived and he never fell into transgression. But woman was. And this is why women have to have a covering over angels. It doesn't, men don't have to have a covering for angels. Let's, go, let's uh, open a couple of these verses here. Therefore, just as for one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Now, it doesn't say because of one man's sin. It says... Just as through one man, sin, this is a noun, entered the world, and death, a noun, entered the world through sin, and death then spread to all men. So it's kind of like if, if Bob's going, or anybody or me, we're going backpacking, and I put a backpack on, and uh, I put Rigby, my dog, in the backpack, and we go to Colorado. And Rigby gets out in Colorado, and he has a tick on him. And this tick is this terrible tick from California that has never been in Colorado. And this tick gets off and gets on all the other dogs and just decimates the whole dog population in Colorado. It wasn't because what I did wrong, but that dog came on me. It's not because I sinned, but he hitchhiked with me because... I was cast to the earth. And then sin, death hitchhiked on sin and spread to all men. It does not say man's sin. It does not say because of one man's sins, death entered. It says because of one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. Right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it doesn't say that. Okay, you read it. You read it and tell me what it says. Where's, where's the comma? Right here. The commas, the com, I, I, that's uh, not the right that's one. That's not the right one. Let me go back right here. I know the comma's right there. But what's it say? Therefore, Therefore comma, comma, just as one man sin in. It doesn't say, okay, go ahead. Where's the comma? Now go ahead, read it. Therefore. Just, space. just. Okay, now what we're going to say. I know say, that you forgot this therefore, word through. Just as through. One man then entered the world. Put a comma. One man comma. through Adam and entered the world. This is And this, that's why it's going to continue. This word sin is a noun. Adam. It's not a verb. That that word sin is a noun. Okay, I don't get the difference between it being a noun or a verb. Noun, person, place, or thing, verb, action. Sin is a noun. Dog is a noun. Okay? Nancy is a noun. Nancy is. Well, I, that, I mean, I, I know what a noun and a verb is, but... Eat is a verb. Sin, Again, as when Bob is reading it, is a verb. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, I know what a noun is, and right. I know what a verb is. But in this sentence, just because it's a noun, so I, I dying, don't understand the dying, difference. Dying, you will see. That's the thing. Dying, you will die. And we get it translated, it meaning surely you will die. Well, there was always death before. We had, and we already talked about this. How did? How did the people that were going to kill Cain know what death was? If Cain, if there had never been death on the earth before, uh, we talked about just one fly. If one fly lived a, a, a month, that it would all I, come. I, I understand it, okay? Yeah. But now, if sin entered the world, a noun, sin. But the way I'm saying, if sin entered the world through men. Through one man. Mm -hmm. Then it says, now through that one man, sin is going to go 
Pass. Pass. Get transferred to everybody else. Satan's power is going to go through everybody but else. But the way you're seeing it, no, sin didn't go through him, so... No, sin how went, through, went, went through Adam. You just said it didn't. It's sin like they were wearing on a backpack. Sin entered the world through Adam. We enter heaven through Christ. We put on Christ. Adam put on sin. We, you know, it, it, it's, it's a different. It's not a verb in action. It's not because of Adam's sin, death entered the world. It's because of Adam's but see, just sin because entered it's the a world verb through Adam. Or a noun. A huge difference. No, it still entered. Sin through still entered. Yeah. One, one man. Man. Adam. That one man is Adam. It doesn't say that, but one man. Yes. Okay. So then. When it went from Adam to Cain, yeah, and Abel, okay, yeah, and it's not a verb. Say it now. Now it's a verb. The action is a verb. Sin. God comes to Cain after Cain is distraught. After Cain doesn't uh, give an offering for whatever no, 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 reason. No, that has nothing to do with no, it. No, it does. He's Sin. Enter Cain well, I, I, and Abel. Mm -hmm. Not before. They entered it at when they were born. born sure. Not when they were old sure. and they gave an offering. Sin was already I didn't say they did. Them. I said, here's a reference to help tie that together. When Cain made an offering that was not uh, uh, acceptable to the Lord, Cain's countenance fell. God Almighty comes and talks to Cain and says, Why has your countenance fallen? Do you not know if you do well, you'll be accepted, and if you don't, you won't? However, or by the way, or just be wise, that sin lies at your door, and its desire is to rule over you, but you shall rule over it. it sin is a noun. It's a deity. It ha it's a spirit. It's a spiritual entity, okay? Its desire is to rule over you. You're, 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 you're mad, you're pissed, you're, you're mulling over this, and guess what? Something is going to rule over it. And what happened? Afterwards, Cain kills his brother. But So it, sin is a noun. It's a deity. Just because it's a noun. It's a deity. It's a spirit being. It wants to rule over you. <coughs> sin talks to you. Sin whispers in your ear. Not a verb. Not a, it's it's a deity. There's a, an essence to it. Sin and death shall be cast well, into the lake of fire. Well, go through Adam. It's sure. Just there. That's how it. No, that's how it entered the world. Satan was. Okay. Well, it Satan, entered through. Satan Adam. was in the Garden of Eden. <coughs> how did Satan get to Earth? He got cast out from the Earth. How did he get cast? With Adam. Through the actions of Adam. Maybe in his backpack. Maybe on his shoulder. Maybe like we go into heaven with Christ. But through Adam, sin entered the world. And sin is a deity, a noun, an entity, uh, an evil being, uh, according to, to the scripture. So that's why the scripture, it, it's very hard when and we get so many false teachings and so many... Uh, uh, teachings because we don't put the whole counsel of God together. And the whole counsel of God is God from the very beginning has loved us and did nothing but want to protect us. Cain was wrong. And James says Cain was of his father the devil. Now maybe he became of or something, but God come and talk to Cain. Cain kills Abel. God comes and talks to Cain. God protects Cain. God says, hey, I'm going to put a mark on you so no one will kill you, basically. Is this a man, is this a God that's punishing? Is this a God that's unloving? This is a God that will only punish and only come against uh, those who fight against his inheritance. God is good all the time. All the time to his inheritance. Not once in Scripture do you find anywhere where God is bad to his inheritance. Not one place. And you find many places in Scripture where the Jewish people had, were massacred and done wrong. 
But they, the ones that were massacred and done wrong were not God's inheritance. We could say Eve, no, I'm joking, guys. We can say Eve was the first woman liver, wanting to rule over her husband, as is stated in Genesis 3.16. And that's a joke, okay? Because women livers, they don't want to be uh, Adam's helpmate. They want to totally annihilate and rule over her. They think they have a right. But the simple fact is women don't have the authority men have. Good, bad, or otherwise. Men are the covering. Genesis 3.16, God talks to the woman, that's who became Eve, and he says, And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Semicolon. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Okay, so when we, we look at this word desire that the woman will have for their husband, which is sin, is the same as sin had for Cain, in the Hebrew, is akin to the Greek word, um, how, how do you think you pronounce that? Strong's G, 1939. Epithemia. Epithemia. So it's akin yeah. to that word epithemia, uh, which in Greek we translate to lust. At, as in Gen uh, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. Now Genesis, uh, I said Genesis, I meant Galatians, guys. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust, of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, do you think the Holy Spirit, I mean, it's talking about the Holy Spirit, right? The spirit, this is, you know, it's even capitalized. Does the spirit have a desire for the flesh? No, so we know just by reading this that that word lust means something else. Well, when you look up that word lust, it's to rule over. Okay, so when we take the Greek Septuagint, which is the Old Testament written in Greek, they translate that word lust to submit or desire. One, one, one rendering is submission, you will submit. The other is you, you, your desire, your lust for is a desire to to rule over, but nevertheless, you will submit. So, the flesh, the law, in this case, wants to rule over the man. And the spirit wants to rule over the man. But they're not wanting to rule over each other. The Holy Spirit could care less about ruling over a demonic spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit doesn't want to rule over the flesh. He want, doesn't want to rule over sin. He doesn't want to rule over Satan. He wants to rule over the new born-again spirit that's in us. Remember that show, that thing we watched, the spirit, soul, and body? The spirit of God wants to rule over it. Well, so does Satan. And they're battling for us, over us. They're not battling each other. Satan is not fighting God. People always say, well, it's opposing forces like yin and yang. Satan's always fighting God. No, Satan's not fighting God. He's fighting us. He's fighting for control over us, and God's fighting for control over us. Because it wouldn't be a match. It would be like my two-year-old little baby coming up and wanting to fight me. I mean, if I was going to fight, there wouldn't be any contact. Right? There, you just, it's, God is not at all intimidated by anything he created. Okay? His desire is for us to rule over us. And when you become a Christian and you become a new uh, born-again creation, and it goes further on to say in chapter 6, 24, that those who, are, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires, you've been divorced. I don't know if you... Yes. But God doesn't want to rule over us, does he? Sure. Or does he want a relationship with us? He wants to rule over us, but that being just like Adam and Eve were ruling, he wants, we want to follow God. God wants us to follow him. 
that's ruling over. He doesn't want to punish us, make us stand up, sit down, be a puppet, but that rule over us, be a covering. Be, be an authority, be a protector. So that's where that, that whole, remember when we study that word authority, it's not, you got to do what I say, it's I'm protecting you. I'm providing for you. I will lead you to green pastures. I will lead you to still water. I will supply all your need. I'll take you out of Egypt and make you walk in the desert. And I will personally supply you with food. And I will not allow even your sandals to wear out. And I will not allow any sickness or disease to be upon you. That's the covering. That's what authority, authority is protection. And this is where we're getting, this whole thing that Timothy is going through is not that a woman doesn't have a right, but a woman needs a protection. And the man is supposed to protect women. Okay? Scripture, uh, interpret scripture. Both desire and lust can be translated to submission, as is in the Greek Septuagint. See my teaching on the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Now, I have this down below, but you guys don't have it, because it's, it's long, but I will give it to you. Point B. On the whole, now, every woman's not this way. I know women that aren't. But on a whole... Women, once pregnant, want their husband to be their protector and provider and are no longer trying to rule over them. Therefore, the husband must be willing to put their own life in harm's way to protect their wives and children, which includes working with the sweat of their body to provide for them. This, if this is done... The women are willing to put their careers, schooling, or anything else that would separate them from their child on hold. We all have learned about Hitler, right? Yeah. Do you think, was Hitler married? I think so. I think so. Do you think Hitler's wife? Hitler was a protection for Hitler's wife? You think as long as Hitler was alive, she was untouchable? Yeah. How about Mussolini? How about Stalin? Pick an evil name out there that had a wife. As long as they were alive, they were, and their authority, they were that woman's protector. So if you are married to an unbelieving husband, a believing wife is married to an unbelieving husband, guess what? He can protect you. And it does say if he is pleased with you, he wants to stay. That means he loves you, man. You know, you just don't love God, but he loves you. He's going to work, go to work, every day, go to battle. If somebody comes to his doorway, he's getting the baseball bat out, the club, the staff, the gun. He's going out to confront that enemy, putting his life on danger. He's telling his wife and the children, get safe, get under the bed, hide in the closet, go in the basement. While he goes, this is just the characteristic of men and women. Now, I know there's exceptions to this, but the overall characteristic of this. Now, I know some men want to get pregnant and have babies. Is it going to happen? I see heads nodding. No, because it doesn't really matter how much you want to be a woman, you're not going to have a baby. Now, someone might put an artificial womb in you and put a baby in you and through science try to change that, but the simple fact, it doesn't matter what we want, we can't have what we are, we're not given. Eve does not have the power and authority over demons that Adam has, or, or and, uh, man has. Just 
on a general speaking. But, through Christ, they do. Okay? So if your husband leaves you, are you like totally susceptible now to every demon out there? No, because Christ is your covering. But God, who created these laws, is going to honor these laws. If you're married, you go through the man. If you're not married, Christ is the, the, the defender of the widows and orphans. Okay? But is Christ the defender of the widows and orphans if there's a dad there who's the father and the husband? No, he helps the father and husband who helps the wife and child. Right? Now we know we know that woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, being conceived by the Holy Spirit So we know that woman, that Christ, I'm saying that Christ came from a woman. He didn't come from a man, right? So Christ came from a woman being deceived, uh, who was deceived, who didn't have power and authority over angels, who was subject to her husband, but Christ still came through woman. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Rule, that same that word, rule over you. Therefore, also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Galatians 3.16 Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and your seed who is Christ. So we know that Christ came from a woman. Okay? God came from a woman, okay? So, women are not inferior, are not bad. I mean, that's where the holy s s egg came from. The genealogy of Mary, right? Okay, man, Christ, was subject to corruption. Okay, so we know. He came, God, Jesus, the Son of God, had the sperma, the DNA of the Holy Spirit. This, this, to speak through man but because Jesus came through Eve man Eve he was subject to corruption but had the authority and protection of his father who is God himself therefore he did not see corruption it says or see decay so do you think Jesus took a dump that's corruption do you think Jesus died? That's corruption. Do you think he died from a violent death? That's corruption. Did Jesus see any decay? Nope. Didn't see any. Uh, why? Because the Bible says he's not going to see any decay. Let's look at Acts 13 and then Psalm 16. Acts 13, verse 34. And that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. So that means he was in corruption, right? But he's no longer to return to corruption because Christ has a different body, a resurrected body. As he spoke thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David, verse 37. But he whom God raised from up, I'm sorry, but he whom God raised up saw no corruption. So this is where when we start isolating it, corruption is death. Dying, you shall die. From corruption, you shall die. But when you're raised up, you will never have corruption again. So di Jesus didn't see any corruption, but Jesus died. Psalm 16, verse 10 says, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, that's the grave, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So Jesus didn't see corruption, but he surely died. 
So obviously they're different things. Uh, we don't even have to look up in the Hebrew and the Greek as I do. Just read it in context. Uh, Christ was subject to corruption. But once he was raised, he would no longer return to corruption. We all in this room are subject to corruption, aren't we? That's why Christ made a way to deliver us from corruption. You know that word save means delivered, healed. Uh, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, you shall be saved, sozo. You shall be healed. You shall be delivered from corruption. You shall be delivered from kidney disease. You shall be delivered from high blood pressure. You shall be delivered from uh, metal rods in your back. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. He went and he was beaten and he was shed. He, 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 he was in Pilate's praetorium. And he paid the price to deliver us from corruption. Now, I believe Jesus was attacked by sickness as we all are. But I believe he did not give in to sickness. Therefore, never saw corruption manifest in his life, nor do we. So do you think Jesus had a cold? I don't think he did. He might have. It doesn't say he didn't. It doesn't say he did. But I don't. But was was the virus that causes a cold? Did it come upon his body? I think it did. But I think just as maybe it was Smith was a worker, but somebody in our past history that, that was ministering to sick people a lot. Uh, I think the Lublani play. And they were saying, you can't touch this. And he says, no, 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 that sickness can't even touch it. They, it will die. And he, they would put this on his, his finger in the petri dish and actually watch it die. Okay? I think sickness came to Jesus, but it died. Okay? I don't think it ever got uh, the ability to manifest. So concluding, um, women... Now, this is over the head. Women are to submit to their covering. Women are not to submit to every man out there. It says either women are to submit to their own husband, their own covering, which includes not trying to be their teacher or have authority over them because they lost it. Now, you didn't lose it, but Eve did, and we're descendants of Eve, but all men come through Eve. But we still have this authority. But this authority isn't the authority of God. That's why Jesus didn't have an earthly father. He had a spiritual. He got the authority of his earthly father. But who wants the authority of the heavenly, of, of Adam, if it's there, but it's not sufficient? But even with the teaching, and, and, I, and I understand everything you're saying, but like in the home the husband has the authority over the wife but what if there is something he does not know and you do you cannot teach him i believe you can teach him that word as we mentioned earlier and, I, and I, if i keep going back over these things that word teaching is akin to having an authority i'm telling you what's right i'm telling you the way it is not that you both have different opinions and one's right and one's wrong. It's, it's my way or the highway. Now, many times, my wife will attest that I say that because I know I'm right. It's my way or the highway. I don't really use that exact wording, but that's kind of what, <laughs> that's kind of what it is, is, is saying because I know I'm right. What I talk about, I talk about, I know I'm right. Well, there's some things she knows she's right about, like the medical field. She says this is what it is. She's right. She's always right about what the periodic tables are and what these formulas do and what different medications do. And she's always right because I have no knowledge of it. So can she teach me? Absolutely. About what she knows. But she can't be everything I know is right. But the man, that's his job. But she has to be his helpmate. So if the man's not a Christian, she is a Christian, 
and she's a mature Christian. Let's say she's been a Christian for three, four, five years. The husband's not. He still loves her. He hasn't come to Christ yet. She's still staying with him, and she just doesn't know the things about bringing in demons in, right? She has to mention it. She has to teach it, and she has to teach it somehow in love where he will do it. Maybe turning on some radio stations, maybe print. But she has to teach him that what you're doing is wrong. Okay? You, you love me, but you can't be having playboys in the house. You know, hey, I just look, read the articles. No, you can't have them in the house. It's not because I'm jealous, not because it makes me feel, but because you're letting demons into the house. She has to voice that. But what about where it says just her her chaste lifestyle no. will bring him, not her preaching to him, but just being a loving, okay, so, obedient. So what does it mean? I get it, but what does it mean then if he's willing to live with you? Why would he not be willing to live with you? In other words, you become a Christian, now why would the husband not be willing to live with you? Because he just can't stand the spirit that's in you. But if he can stand the spirit that's within you, say, and you're chaste living, your whole life, you're loving, the way you live and manifest God, he will be won over by that more than a word. He will see that what you're doing is more powerful by the way you act than the way you teach. Not that she couldn't say things. It's, if you're going to tell me this, show me in body. I tell this to my wife all the time. If you're going to love me, show me. Right? Now, I was the one to tell her, even if you don't love me, tell me you love me, and I'll make you love me. But still, if you're going to, if I want to, you know, how do I know you love me? Because I could see it. I could feel it. So the man will be won over by the woman's actions, not by what she says. Nevertheless, she still has to say it. Doesn't mean she doesn't teach. This is where I'm talking about. A woman that is in God teaches her husband's nuts. Therefore, so her husband can come to the knowledge of Christ. How's he ever going to come to the knowledge of Christ? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How can they hear unless someone is sent out to be to teach the word, right? She has to she has to say it. Or somebody has to take them to church, has to turn on her pastor's teaching or something. This attitude is required. It's not, and this is my conclusion. This attitude is required of all godly women to protect them for demons, just which are always looking for an opportunity to attach themselves to someone. Now we didn't open that scripture where it says because a woman's to have a covering. Uh, I bypassed it, but I'll just tell you, you can look it up, you can Google a woman's to have a protection because of the demons. No, why a covering? Why does a man not need a covering? Well, it says he has a covering. He, he does, but what if a man comes out from under that covering? Still, demons aren't going to attack him because he has the authority over them. The woman doesn't have the authority over them. She has to go through the Word of God. She has to go through Christ as authority. But a man doesn't, who doesn't know Christ has a authority over Satan. Satan cannot do anything to an atheist. The atheist has to allow Satan to do it to him. Satan has to trick them, deceive them like he deceived Eve, but he always has it. Where women, they... On a whole, you can see women just follow men all the time. You can see these um, cults. And usually, most cults have a, the biggest portion of the population is the congregation or women. And then the men start coming to them because of the woman. Now, what was that show with Charles Manson? We watched this documentary about Charles Manson. And that's how Charles Manson got the men. He needed the, the muscle. How did he get the muscles? He got the women. That's what he said. If I get the women, the men will come. And they'll serve me. And I'll, he'll, he teach, talk to women and offer sex and love, joy, peace, all this kind of stuff. But he, used, he, he deceived a woman, and the woman got the man to follow him because of sex. Point two. 
Christ is the ultimate deliverer from struggles we have with the devil. Come on, let's just say, you, want, you have a struggle, married, man, female, whatever, it's Christ who gives you that power and authority. Okay? Through Christ, Christians are equal. Nancy, you and I are equal. But I, as a teacher, am subject to a more strict discipline or uh, consequences. Okay? God doesn't want you to suffer those consequences. He's not saying you can't teach because you don't know. He's saying, I don't want you to be the teacher because I don't want you to suffer from the consequences because you don't have a, that, that built-in covering. Okay? Uh, but we are equal. But you have different roles to serve God while in these tents of clay. I see you got to go, Bob. Point four. Men are to be the covering for women. This means no more abandonment, abuse, or ridicule of those under your covering. Come on, guys. Quit being Christians and getting divorced. I understand it. You can want it. You can justify it. But God said you're the covering. God said woman get pregnant. God said, man, protect. Start protecting. Quit ab abusing your kids. Quit running away from your responsibility. Quit having sex and having a kid out of wedlock and not paying child support. Quit doing that. You, that's what God made you to cover him. Point five. Churches are to be the covering for men. That are a covering for others. This means the church needs to operate in church discipline correctly, for not forsaking the fellowships of those born again, but only against those that claim to be Christians or not. And this is, we'll see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 5 and 6. And it, people take ch church discipline and they'll say, well, if you don't agree with us, we'll cast you out of the church. You are never in Scripture anywhere does it say that you are to cast out a fellow believer out of the church assembly. You're to cast out those that say they're fellow believers and are not. You're not even to eat with those that say they are believers, that are named above believers, that are not. But if you're just a Christian and you're born again and you just have a lot of bad theology... You don't cast them out. How are they ever going to learn? You love them. You put up with them. You minister to them. They pull your hair out. You are a good shepherd. You go after the lost, the lost, even one. So these pastors, and I'm telling the pastors out there, if you're kicking guys out in your church that are born again, you're wrong and, and will have to answer to God personally for that. You are not, a pastor is not to forsake his sheep. That's what Jesus says. I'm the good shepherd. You no, people no. that do that, you're bad. You're just hirelings. A, a bad Christian still needs to be in a church. And I mean a real Christian. or Someone that's really born again. But a really good wolf in sheep calling is to get kicked out. And you need discernment. You need the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of discernment. Now, I see you got to go to the bathroom and you're giving me all kinds of respect. So let's just close. Sorry for this went so long, but it's it's just, this is what we do. This is teaching. We're iron sharpening iron. And not everybody's going to agree with everybody, but uh, we have to agree with the Word. In Jesus' name, amen.